uh, everyone, this meeting will be recorded. All right, thank you very much. All right, thank you very much, everyone. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Uh, thank you very much for joining this session. Uh, this is uh, part three of our webinar series on demystifying universal acceptance. Uh, we've had two webinars that have been held. One was in uh, June, that was of course an introductory uh, webinar, which was, uh, which was on why multiple languages are uh, important on the internet. And then uh, we had uh, another uh, webinar last month that was on uh, why we should care and why, uh, why we should care that there's a universal acceptance and why it actually matters. So today our uh, webinar will focus on showcasing uh, universal acceptance projects around the globe. And uh, we are glad to have uh, experts from around the world that have um, held su successful uh, UA projects. Uh, so uh, just before I invite the, the moderator, a few housekeeping rules. Uh, please be kind, uh, inclusive of course, and respectful. And uh, please mute your microphone when not speaking. And finally, uh, enjoy the session, engage and learn. If you have any questions, kindly raise your hand or uh, you can type it in the chat. All right. Uh, just to get started, uh, I'll hand over to Chennai uh, to take us through the session as a moderator. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Innocent. Um, hi, everyone. Thank you for joining the session and thank you so much to the After Access team for setting it up. It seems to be it's going to be an exciting project um, session where we actually have projects that have been implemented and also really talk about the kind of impact these uh, initiatives have on our communities. So by way of introduction, my name is Chennai and I'm the Special Advisor for Africa Innovation at Africa, uh, Africa Muradi at the Mozilla Foundation. And I will be joined by my four fantastic speakers who are going to be the panelists. We have Abdel Monem Gadila, who's um, the deputy manager of the internationalized domain name, country code top CCTLD of Egypt, and a strong supporter of universal acceptance. We also have Ms. Ufa Modi, uh, who is a postgraduate student at Nottingham Trent University, where she's pursuing an MSc in cybernetics and communications engineering. She's really passionate about um, young people from underrepresented communities. And she's also the co-founder of the global lead, uh, of the digital grassroots organization. So this is really fantastic to have that kind of representation. Then we have Malik Alsan, who is a cybersecurity analyst. His daily routine consists of working on the domain name system, web development, internet network, network measurement. So we really have people who are truly, truly entrenched in the work at hand. Then we have Mark Detzegelt. Mark, please uh, correct me if I butchered your last name. So Mark holds a BA in uh, international relations, focused on internet governance and the impact of technology on public and private policymaking. He's also a member of the ICANN GNSO Council, and they will all be sharing um, their insights as we go along. So to kick off the panel, we have a round of questions prepared, and then I would assume innocent if that someone will be watching the chat for questions, but we will leave about 20 minutes at the end of the session for people to ask questions and um, we'll take it from there. So I will start off with my first um, panelist, Abdul Monem. Hello. My question to you is um, sharing your example from Egypt, Egypt, what does it take to actually start a universal acceptance initiative? Um, do we not have Abdel? Do we not have Kalila? All right. I will pass it on to the next person. Is Malik on the call? Oh, 
Now we've got him. Hi, hi, Kalila. Dominic, can you hear me? Okay, we can't hear you from our side, so I'm going to. Um, can you hear us now? Uh, Shinai, can you hear me now? Yes, I can. Fantastic, you sound clear. Thank you. Yes. Uh, yes, so the first question that I posed to you was um, sharing an example from Egypt. What does it take to start up a universal access initiative? Actually, uh, let me introduce myself uh, somehow a bit in details. I am Abdelmanan Galila. I am working for the Telecom Regulator of Egypt, uh, responsible for uh, the number planning department. Uh, this includes the addressing, uh, IBs and domain names and emergency tasks and mobile number portability, something like this. Uh, and I am Universal Acceptance Ambassador for the third year and the Vice Chair of uh, Universal Acceptance Steering Group. Uh, for Universal Acceptance, I, I need to start a little bit backwards for one of the topics of the sessions organized by ATOS. Uh, regard uh, by uh, access plus related to universal acceptance, which is the point related to that universal acceptance doesn't care only about IDNs or ERs, but also for the new generic to be labeled domain names. So I will not go in, I will not dive more into what is universal acceptance and what is the goal. I, it's already covered before. And uh, Currently, I would like, as she and I said, that uh, she would like to talk about the UA initiative here in Egypt. Actually, till now, there is no uh, official submission of UA local initiative to UAG from Egypt side. But for, to start a UA local initiative, you have first to identify what are the stakeholders you are targeting. I mean, you are targeting academia. So what is your plan in order to handle the UA project for academia? Awareness session, training, uh, make them aware about AIs, what, is, what, what they mean by universal acceptance, what they mean by even internationalized domain names. You know that uh, most of the people around the, world, uh, around the world or even for the Arab region don't care a lot about the Arabic domain names to be used, as we need to have more awareness about the importance of having such domain names. It is very important. Why it is why it is very important? Uh, you, if if you back uh, for 20, 20 years before, you will see that there is only twenty five percent of the content online is is not English and 75% is English. Currently, after these 20 years, you will find that it is 50% English, 50% non-English. It means the contents from other languages start to spread online and exists online rapidly. And they are expected, the specialists uh, or experts, is expected that this content will reach to 75% non-English again is 25% only English for the next 20 years. So for the local initiative, you have first to identify the, what are the stakeholders targeted. Uh, for example, uh, I said that we need to, for example, to go for academia, you should have a, a plan how to engage with academia. For me, as experience for this, I wanted to uh, identify two main uh, branches for uh, for academia. The first part I wanted to uh, I targeted to non graduate students, the, the normal students of computer science and uh, computer science engineering. So I went there and conducted many sessions related to universal acceptance, AIs, and the new generic to level domain names. Actually, uh, and to be honest, they don't have a solid idea even what is I can. That is one of my challenges. The second branch was I, I, tar I, I, I targeted from the second branch the graduated engineers. 
whatever they are from computer science or faculty of engineering. So I identified one of the castle of information technology here in Egypt that helped uh, graduate engineers in order to, to prepare them for the market of IT. I targeted this agency and conducted many, many training related to uh, universal acceptance, AIs, hands-on training for AIs, universal acceptance. They, uh, I think they were, uh, have a big knowledge about ICANN, but not in depth. This is for academia. For the government, it is, I think it is very, very difficult to engage with the government to have them, uh, to have, uh, to give them a, a solid idea about the concept of universal acceptance. As I said before, it is a problem of awareness about what is IDN even itself. What is the importance of having IDN domain names for the online Arabic content services? What, what is the importance for this? With the, the, there is a, a, a shortage in, in this knowledge about IDNs, EIs, and of course, it's universal acceptance. So I start propagating here from my entity at the Telecom Regulator of Egypt. And there are many sessions conducted by uh, my colleague, Hadia from the experts and the ALEC member. I, I, I think uh, it is nominated for ALEC position. It, it held here inside the regulator many sessions about universal acceptance and domain names. And I, I went to some uh, other governmental entities and the conduct sessions, and I think it was very successful. But till the moment, if you take a look for how, how many domain names, IDN domain names for Egypt, you will find that it is decreasing the number. We started by uh, around 3,000 3, domain names in, two, in 2010, and now we reached to uh, around 400. Uh, as as the customer try to buy a domain names and point it to some 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 English data, and after sometimes you don't need to use this domain name again. I they will not re renew it again. That is for academia. For the private sector, I identified one of the agencies that have registrations for any software company here in Egypt that work locally and do and the other one to export softwares to uh, to the worldwide countries but I don't have I, di I didn't have the chance to work with them uh, uh, in this area uh, I think this is what I am uh, I did for uh, government for private sector for, and for academia. And the last, last point for the UA local initiative uh, for the student or even for the graduate engineers or engineers uh, themselves, I found that they, they need to look and feel what you are talking about. I want to have a consistent environment for, for example, for Arabic domain name, accessing Arabic content to website and using Arabic email address to send and receive. So uh, for UEG, we, we, we try to make a virtual environment to make this real for user to have a mail to set to for the, for the student or for the engineer to practice how to make a mail server, EI mail server, whatever the language, and the practice having a domain name to access this mail server and send and receive emails this is virtually at the network. Uh, this is done by cooperation between UEG and me and uh, my colleague from Pakistan. This is till the moment. And of course, uh, I have another working area outside Egypt. I conducted uh, hackathons uh, for Russia. I conducted two hackathons for Russia, uh, I think at 2020. And also I conducted here in Egypt a hackathon for a computer science student. It was very successful. And there are there is a, there were a winning team. There is there was a winning team that use open source software to make their software you already. And it went in the in the good direction, and the message was delivered about what is universal acceptance and what is the goal behind universal acceptance. 
and I hope uh, I could expand more in the future uh, related for anything related to universal acceptance. Of, and for another area in the world, for India, I conducted a session with uh, my colleague from ISOC India, and it was very really successful. And recently, I conducted a session with the regulator of, uh, of Saudi Arabia about all the area IDN, AIs, and universal acceptance, and it was very successful. And I hope we have our continent, Africa, to be UA ready. Why we need to have Africa UA ready? We have many, many, more, I think we have more than 2,000 languages in Africa. So uh, if you go around, you will find, I think, French, Amharic, Swahili, Arabic, other, other many languages. Why you need to have most of your citizens, most of the people inside your country to be away from having the rights to access the internet? Why you, you need to prevent them from accessing the governmental services that are published online through the digital transformation projects? You need to consider all of this. If you if you back for uh, one of the events, I think uh, it was in Africa, there is a question about that we take uh, 50 years, we, we take uh, around 50 years to have 50% of the populations uh, worldwide to be connected online. So for the other 50%, we will take another 150 years. So if you dig more about what are the reasons, you will find one of the main restriction about this was the language. So I, I don't know, I don't know anything about English. So I need to have my right to access the internet. I need to have my right to send and receive email. I need to have my right to receive notifications from governmental or other online services at my email. This is my right. Thank you, Shianai. Thank you so much, Abdul Manem. Uh, I think the, you raised so many pertinent points about who the target audience is and how to get to them, raising awareness for people to actually be concerned, and also just amplifying the language as a barrier in terms of like the most represented languages in contrast to the populations that actually speak to them. So I'm going to pass it on now to Malik. And like, if you could also just reflect on some of the things that um, Abdul Manem just mentioned, but if you could share um, what impact um, the work that you've done in Berlin in terms of like universal, your initiative around universal acceptance has had in fostering the readiness to actually set up a universal acceptance system. And if you could also keep your, um, your comments to within five minutes and then so that we can ensure we have uh, feedback from the audience. Thank you. Thanks, Jenny. Uh, I hope you, you hear me well. Perfect. Uh, in Benin, uh, thank you. Uh, in Benin, we uh, initiated a study uh, whose objective was to check the level of compliance of Beninese companies' uh, email servers with universal acceptance. Uh, this study was conduct conducted on a small sample of documents and reveals us uh, that the most of our uh, email system are not UA ready. Uh, uh, at the end of this study, we we work with some organizations or companies to help them to update their email system uh, for UA ready. Uh, we, we also organize uh, our next session about universal acceptance. Uh, for our community. Uh, recently, we organized a, a webinar on so universal acceptance for French-speaking community. And to help our community to better inform uh, about universal acceptance, uh, we are publishing articles on universal acceptance. Um, Thank you, Jenny. That is the initiative that we, we, we are doing in Benin. Thank you so much, Malik, for that brief response and also showing um, an action point, which is actually to go to you know, the traditional means of communication by publishing work that people can read and understand on what it means to be um, ready for universal acceptance. So I'm going to pass it on to Ufa. 
Ufa, um, you know, there have been stakeholders that have been identified in the session that Galila spoke about and specifically targeting government representatives and academia as well. So given your, um, your work, especially with young people, um, do you think that in some of these initiatives that you see around universal acceptance, enough has been done to actually engage um, young people to be part of this because clearly there's a lot of interest in preserving language. And in addition to that, um, how do you think young people can actually be encouraged to be part of these initiatives? Hi, Shanae. Thank you so much for that question. Um, so first of all, like I always say, it's very, very hard to talk about any kind of future without considering the people or the demograph that would be the future, which is the present um, day young people. Young people play a very vital role in any plan for global sustainability in the future because they are the ones that would carry on any traditions or any standards or principles or policies that we are trying to put in place now. Apart from that, young people have always spread across so many stakeholder groups. They can be present in the government, in the civil society, in academia, in the technical community, and in the private sector. This has just gone so far to show how diverse they can be and how investments in them is always a sure banker in um, trying to deploy any kind of globalization or standardization or um, um, global adoption of any kind of policy. So um, looking at how young people can be engaged, engaged in all of this, I think that the bedrock of that is awareness. Awareness has played a very, very vital role in how universal acceptance initiatives from all of the stakeholder groups, ICANN, civil society, governments, and how it has shown a clear pathway for them to do targeted community engagement for these young um, um, for these young people who are the next generation, it enables them to be um, aware and answer questions like why is it important to have um, more TLDs available? Why should we um, invest in um, more having more than two or three characters in top level domain names? And why should we even have more um, as, um, and use other kind of um, scripts other than um, and why should we adopt the use of non ascii characters in TLDs? It helps them understand why these principles would be important and why we should strive to adopt these kind of things as a way of promoting universal acceptance. Apart from that, we also find out that um, one very important thing that we should consider is that young people around the world, it's not just the same way the internet is not one size fits all. It's not, um, there's, there are different, they have different needs and different ways of um, best practices for engaging them. Um, I, I'm currently, uh, my organization, Digital Grassroots, is a youth initiative that is focused on increasing digital literacy on internet governance and digital rights issues among young people from underrepresented regions. From working in this, um, from working in this organization, I've come to realize that um, apart from just um, trying to push out content for engaging and raising awareness for digital literacy issues um, around these universal acceptance principles or um, best practices. Um, you would also find out that when you're trying to engage young people, the model for engagement shouldn't just be um, something random that has been recycled time over time across the globe. There should be, it should be targeted and, and these organizations are that push out the um, universal acceptance initiatives should find out what young people in under in various underrepresented communities globally actually need. They should find out the targeted ways to promote their inclusion. They should also provide clear opportunities and inclusion pathways for leadership and positions for young people in these universal um, acceptance initiatives. There should be more talk on why um, TLDs should be, um, there should be more talk on both the technical aspect and the non-technical aspect so that um, everyday young people would be able to um, understand all of these principles and see how they can promote all of this in the future. Thank you.
Thank you so much, Ufa. I think the point of not recycling things that have already been done and truly engaging young people in a meaningful world way is quite important. And so then um, I'll pass it on to Mark. Mark, thank you for being able to join. I know you were in another session where um, you were just pulling some things together. So you can always, I've done some introductions, but I would really want to ask from your opinion, Mark, with the work that you've already um done especially around the evaluation of websites websites for acceptance of email addresses um what role can governments play in fostering the establishment of uh, universal acceptance initiatives and actually accelerating universal acceptance readiness because we've heard the need for different stakeholders to be involved we've heard the need around awareness but how exactly can we get governments to actually take the lead in such questions Thank you very much, everyone. Apologies for the delay. This is Mark Beresgeld. I run a small consultancy in Brazil that has been, you know, all young people. We are a bunch of next generation icon uh, people working together on this kind of issues. And we have produced a few research pieces for the Universal Acceptance uh, Steering Group. Uh, one of them you might have been in contact with is the acceptance of um, EAI in the top 1,000 websites. More recently, we have also produced uh, the UA readiness of open source code pilots. That's something I will discuss with you all today at some point, in which basically we went through open source software, having a look at what the situation is like uh, over there. But first, I, I will address Shanai's question. Uh, in terms of governments, I think that the, the difficulty we have, and, and now I have been doing universal acceptance for some four years or so, which is just about the right time for me to see this happen, is that you engage with a government, it takes a while until you find the right person to interact with. And then when you do and they get excited and, and everybody's ready to move on. Governments change, cabinets change, people get promoted around to completely different areas. And then all of the engagement that you did gets lost, right? You, you need to start again and you need to find another person who is also right and do the engagement again. This is something that seems to be consistent. I, I was discuss, discussing this with my friends from um the 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 SEE region and they, they face the same problem so when it comes to governments the kind of thing that we should be looking into is how do we actually fix things for them without needing to rely too much on them <laughs> apologies uh, so this is where things such as the, this research that, that, I, that, I, that I'm putting on the chat, the one that evaluates open source code in GitHub, uh, come into place. So if you help them migrate to a solution that's more UA friendly within the government systems and within um, the, the, their contact, contracting processes, if you help them make changes that are, are not based on engagement, but rather on fixing their systems and helping them promote solutions that are UA friendly. That's the kind of thing that it doesn't matter if the, the, the involved politicians change. That's a change that's, that's you know, forever, quote unquote. Uh, it's something that will keep going no matter who is there. And you can always reach out to them and say, hey, uh, uh, I'm the person who helped implement this, you know, I'm the guy, I'm the girl who helped you out with this. And th this is the problem. This is what we're trying to face. If you help them make positive change, rather than focusing too much on outreach, engagement and talks and so on. But if you, if you help steer them in the correct direction, it doesn't matter what happens, uh, you will be advancing your way. So that's an initial consideration um, for us to have and, um, as well, hello to all, to all of my universal acceptance friends. Great to see Abdelmanen here and good people who I met through the Next Generation Fellowship Program. Great to see Sarah, Shanai, Innocent here, everyone. Um, 
pleasure to be with you all here today. Thank you so much, Mark, for your intervention and highlighting some of the work that you've done. And it's also always great to see you as well, having been fellow um, ICANN alumni. So I'm going to open it up for questions, for a round of questions before we go back to the panelists, because we do have a list of questions for them, but we do not want to hog the mic. So are there any questions um, from the participants? Um, and please do indicate who you're addressing the question to and introduce yourself. We'd love to hear some questions um, on what has been spoken about by the, by the panelists. Okay, so um, I think we'll go back again to the second round of questions for the panelists. And if there are any questions that might, might pop up, please do share them in the chat or just raise your hand and I'm watching the, um, the participants' questions and I'll be able to like ask you to speak or you can pop them into the chat. So I'll go back to um, Abdul Monem. I think my question to you, because you actually mentioned a lot of like challenges the initiatives were facing, um, you know, like getting this conversation going and engaging people. What advice do you give those that are planning to start um, their local um, initiative? Like what are the points of emphasis that they should engage with to ensure that they actually have people who are interested in engaging on this topic? Uh, thank you, Shinai, for your question. Uh, thank you, uh, other panelists who said uh, many ideas, which are very good for me. Actually, before uh, answer the question, uh, I need uh, to not go far about what, what we are in now in COVID-19. For example, I, I have three childs, all of them going to the, the school. Now, nothing, nothing going to school. All of these classes are already online and you need to subscribe to this, uh, this platform, education platform that exists online using email addresses. I know that most of the, the children, maybe uh, I don't want to know it is 100% couldn't write the English language, especially the youngest ones. So uh, it is better for them to access the, the educational platform using their own local language. The language they are learned from day one in the, at the school. So for example, here in Egypt, it is better to have this child to go to this website using the Arabic domain name and subscribe for a notification from this educational material for about any educational material related to his class through his Arabic email address. So at the current situation, we need, we need, we need to consider using IDNs. Maybe I have some uh, complaints from the African people said that, uh, so we didn't consider that Africa, uh, that Africa is considered unusual to level domain names. And one of the areas that UAK, UAG cares about, or the concept of universal acceptance cares about, it's unusual to level domain names. One of the issues reported before uh, about when you are trying to sign up for social media using the Africa email addresses is they will complain it is not a valid email address. As the developer who makes this application insists that the regular expression should validate that the top level domain name is two or three letters by maximum, but it's not the current case. So. Uh, as I identified before, the local st the, the, the stakeholders that I am caring about for the initiative, let us, for example, talk in general, what are the benefits behind adopting universal acceptance? There are a study said that, that the, 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 there is 9.8 
billion US dollars annual opportunity per year for adopting for as at a benefit from adopting universal accepting. It is very huge money. So how come this huge money came from? Where it came from? There are two areas here. The guys that are not connected to the internet and now could use their own local language to access the internet and have benefits from the contents Maguda already exists online. And the other portion of this money, 9.8, come from the people who have who, who need to use the English language and to want to keep their identity. For example, I need to have, uh, for example, the Dubai. I need to have all the soft, all the applications that are existed within UAE for Dubai State to have to have it under the Dubai. I want to keep my identity. Dot Nike. I want to keep my brand. So for Dot Africa, we need to keep our identity to be existed online. So there are a large benefit behind this. So for this is for if you are looking from from the business view, what are the benefits behind adopting universal acceptance? Let us go from the other area for governmental view about universal acceptance, about adopting universal acceptance. If the government adopt universal acceptance, it means all the customer, all the citizen in their areas could be connected online, could use their own local language, could be contacted using their own local language. I think this is the case that happened in, in India about having every citizen that have national ID who will have Indian. Uh, what I don't know what are the, the languages there. They will have a local language email address in order to receive notification from the government at his 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 or her email. This is a good step for the government. So for academia, um, the main goal in the main goal to have future engineers who build the future to have the knowledge about the importance of adopting universal acceptance. So what, what are the, the issues or the challenges I facing about this? The first issue, the first challenge is the awareness. We need to increase the awareness about the project of universal acceptance. What are the benefits behind universal, adopting universal acceptance? That is the area. So what are my advices related to planning to start a local initiative? First point, to identify the stakeholders, to have a plan how to engage the stakeholders for your main goal behind adopting universal acceptance. How to contact the software companies in order to modify the old developed software to make them compatible with the new genetic level domain names for compatible with international domain names, compatible with email address internationalization. And for the software developers to develop new future application to be by default universal acceptance ready. You have to consider all of these. You have to go to your entity inside your area of work. I wanted to and ask email administrators, I want to have the email server to be AI ready. He will, he will say, what, what, what you mean by AI ready? What you mean by UA ready? So you will start the negotiation about what are UA, what, what is UA, what is AI, and what is the importance of have such a kind of, of feature inside the email server. This is for this is in, in your small area in your in your plate. So you want to expand from point to another point, but you have to start by yourself, by your entity, and then propagate. Propagate through awareness, propagate through making training, uh, propagate through making hands on, uh, even for remotely uh, sessions, it, it is very important. Uh, I think that is why I am targeting for starting a local initiative, or this is my advice for this. Yeah, thank you, Shinai. 
Thank you so much, Abdel Munim. I think it's important, like you rightly said, starting local, starting in that context to where you can actually connect with these people. And that's a good point of advice. So I'm gonna actually move over to Ufa. Uh, and again, I'm watching the chat to see if there are any questions, but I'm also hoping that um, Innocent and the Access Plus team will point out any questions that may come up. So Ufa, from my experience, um, given your experience working in research and currently what you're doing, what impact can research have in advancing the work of universal acceptance initiatives? In particular, with the point that you raised about finding new ways of communicating to make sure that young people are actually involved in the process. Um, thank you very much, Chennai. Um, so from my experience in working in digital grassroots, we have seen a lot of, um, we have seen a lot of unique experiences that has shown us that the way um, minority communities may want to be engaged in terms of um, rolling out programs for community engagement for and um, promoting universal acceptance, it may be extremely different and, um, maybe actually different from um, region to region. So research enables, if we, if we focus more on deploying research into these um, communities, you would see that it enables them to tell their unique stories, which help um, funders and other organizations know how to properly engage them. It also prepares and produces documentation that helps anyone who wants to have correct insights into what exactly is going on into those, in, in those communities, like what are their issues and what are they advocating for, what are they even, even interested in. And at this point, it produces those kind of documentations that have clear um, facts and figures about what mode of um, engagement is best for um, communities in minority communities as a whole. Um, we find out that underrepresented youth are mostly underrepresented because they do not have their own platform for sharing their own um, content and um, and um, using the internet on as how it should be for them and relating to the technology as um, it suits their needs. So there should be more um, avenues like that um, that would help um, um, organizations that may want to provide this kind of funding into these um, um, the globalization for um, minority communities to understand what they need and um, how the issue, and these issues um, affect their inclusion. And then um, also, it all, we have also found out that marginalized communities, um, yes, like I always say, like I um, said before, it's very important to know that the marginalized communities is definitely not one size fits all in a nutshell. And we should always strive to find out what unique experiences that they um, have in order to design and um, um, programs or provide funding or um, methods for and avenues for engaging them. Thank you so much, Ufa. That's really quite important, um, some of the points that you've raised in, in terms of like what we can do with research. And I'll move on to, to Malik. Malik, I think for me, the question that I have is, um, how can we see, do you have, how can we see more universal acceptance initiatives coming up around the globe? And do you think that there's, there's are projects for people with little or no technical knowledge? Because I do think one of the barriers is assuming that this is something that can only be done with people with a specific skill set. So might you have any thoughts on that? Thank you, Jenny. Um, uh, to, see, to see more UA uh, initiative around the world, um, I think uh, it starts uh, with session like this. Um, the, the big problems that we have in universal acceptance is that a lot of people don't know what is it. Uh, that's why it is so important to, to get the message out to everyone. Whether you are a developer, or a system administrator, or an information system manager, or a, a business owner, or even uh, you are a simple internet user, it is important to understand what universal acceptance is and how it can benefit you. Uh, as for, for the questions uh, of whether there are, there are basic projects for people with little or no technical knowledge, <laughs> I will definitely say yes. 
Let's give you some, some example. If you want uh, for your community to know about universal acceptance and you don't have uh, com uh, competent or skills to, to do that, uh, you are the same action you can do is to initiate the project and to invite the person who can speak for, for them. Uh, the, the universal uh, student groups, uh, universal acceptance student group and its uh, ambassadors uh, are available to assist to and to help uh, your community to understand well what is universal acceptance and how they can uh, they can use it well. Uh, recently, uh, USG have launched uh, an introductory course on universal acceptance. I think it is a, a great course for all. Uh, if you just want to understand what is universal acceptance, uh, I will send the link after my, my talk in the chat. Um, apart from that, I, I can mention for more universal acceptance initiative in the world, we need to collaborate more with all parties uh, involved, like uh, Abdel Moment said. Uh, for example, we need to work with local industry, technology developers, uh, and service providers to implement uh, UA business practice. Uh, this can be done in a number of ways, such as technical trainings, uh, hackathons, uh, as well as testing or website and messaging system or email systems. Like I, I present our initiative in Benin. Uh, I think we, we conducted in you know, a study in Benin and we are very open and very uh, available to, to extend these studies for others community. No, feel free to contact us to, to, to collaborate on this kind of uh, research or for our community. Uh, there is a, a lack of information about universal acceptance. Uh, today, we, we need to have more language on the internet. And if we need to talk about of, uh, universal acceptance, we need to, trans, to prepare message in our own language. Like if you don't have uh, any uh, technical skills and you can share the message for your community, you, you are welcome to, for, to, to engage for Universal Acceptance Initiative. Thank you so much, Malik, like for pointing out the resources that we can engage with and like just really thinking about the spaces that we can create for these kinds of conversations to take place. So I'm aware of time and that we've got about nine minutes left. And I wanted to see if there were any questions before I turn to Mark for, for him to, for with a question and some closing remarks, and then we're going to have all the speakers engaged. So I'm just going to see if there's any question in the chat. Okay, so there is one. Um, okay, cool. So there is there are two questions, and so I will collect both questions if we can keep them brief, and then we'll have a round of close remarks from the from the from the pandas. I'll start with Esther, and then I'll also read out the question in the the chat. Thank you, Sunai, and thank you to all the panelists for this brief discussion. So my one question is about what this looks like in reality, having language diversity, given that we are a very diverse continent with many groups. So how can we be sure that the language that, because I feel like the language that uh, is mainly used sort of gets dominance, the cultural dominance on the internet so how do we balance out the, the need to have a language diversity while at the same time thinking about how this creates uh, cultural inequalities or sidelines within groups? So that's my question for any of the panelists. Thank you. Thank you so much, Esther. And thank you for that brief question. So I can see that Joseph, Joseph's question has been responded to uh, by, Mark and I think Malik as well. Oh no, Malik just pointed posted a comment. So um, 
Mark, if we could have your closing remarks to just about two minutes, also responding to the question that has been raised by Esther on like, what does this look like in reality? And then I'll pass it also on to all the other panelists so that we can have closing remarks. Thank you. Thank you. So the adoption in reality uh, depends a lot on what kind of software you're using, basically. Um, I always like to say that UA is a big chain and you can't have a single link broken in the chain. So uh, supposing you adopt, you know, seven steps that are, are making UA work, but the eighth step uh, is not correct, unfortunately, everything breaks apart. You won't be able to, to make it work. That's the problem. And that's kind of what we're trying to solve right now. How do we build a full chain from one end to the other that people can actually rely on for, for UA. Uh, right now, uh, as far as the African continent is concerned, we are looking at some, some interesting data. If, if you see the, the document that I posted uh, on the chat, it's the per country acceptance of the main names for different top websites. And this could be a very interesting resource if you wanna do local outreach. Uh, it's something that you can bring to your constituents and say, you know, as a reference here, we, my team didn't make this research, but I know that they were focusing on countries that they, they thought were representative. So they have Ghana, they have Kenya, and you can, you can compare that, in, for example, with Brazil and see what's going on there. Uh, I think it's a, it's a valuable resource when you're all doing some outreach and definitely something that uh, can be helpful engaging in the future. Um, so thank you and open for any questions. Thank you, Mark. And I will take it back uh, in reverse order and I'll ask Malik for any closing remarks um, on, on, on the whole session and any last points that you want to raise. Please do keep it brief. Thank you, Jenny. Uh, thank you for these uh, sessions. I think it is very important for our community to understand what is universal acceptance, and we need more sessions like this. Um, uh, uh, for universal acceptance, I, I just say uh, everyone can, can be can, can engage on, on this topic. It is very important to have more. Uh, our local language on internet and if we want to have it we need to work more on universal acceptance thank you thank you malik um Ufa? um thank you first of all thanks thank you to everyone who joined um, us today and for listening to us share our points and opinions um i would just like to say that um, we should understand that the need for universal acceptance always boils down to the need for getting everyone online and um, we have if you if we actually go back and look at one of the main issues that um are actually affecting the global digital divide, it's because um, you would realize that it always stems down to many people not being able to participate as equals. And then you would also see that the issues that are being highlighted by um, and supported by universal acceptance are some of these core issues that enable people not participate as equals. So that is one of the main reasons why universal acceptance should always be enforced and embraced. So thank you very much, everyone. Thank you, Ufa. And um, Abdul Manin? Yeah, thank you, Shanae. Actually, uh, there is a case study done by Tanzania. I think it is one of the best initiatives to spread the knowledge of universal acceptance for academia. I am now uh, working with a team, get undergraduate team, uh, for computer science at the University of Dodoma, Tanzania, that have a project related to how to, uh, it, is, uh, it is university admission system, which is the main target behind the graduation project to make this admission, admission system to be universal acceptance ready. As I know that Dodoma University have many students from different areas of the world, 
And uh, of course, large universities like this have different languages uh, for the students. So in order to make the system have all these languages and to make it UA ready, this is the main goal behind the graduation project. This is the second one in Africa, as it is the first one here in Egypt, but I think Tanzania doing a good, good job for propagating the, this project of universal acceptance in that area. So I hope we have similar case studies here in Africa, in other areas in, in Africa, inshallah. Thank you. Thank you so much, Abdul Munim. Um, and thank you so much to the panelists for your very insightful comments and actually pulling together resources and things that we can act on in terms of being universe, getting ready for universal acceptance, but also building up a community around it to engage with the topic and really finding the research and information that's available and providing us with starting points on where we can engage. Uh, on that note, I would like to thank the, everyone for joining the session and the participants for joining um, the, the discussion. I will hand it back over to the After Access team, but thank you so much for being engaged and being part of this conversation. All right, thank you very much, Shanai, uh, for moderating this session. And uh, to our panelists, it's been a pleasure to have you and thank you very much for the interesting discussion. And to all our participants, uh, thank you very much for joining this session. Uh, you've really made it a success. Uh, our next uh, session, I uh, just to let you know, will be next month and it will be on our uh, configuring email address interna uh, internationalization. Yeah. So, um, so, so uh, we, we look forward to, uh, to to having you join that session, which will be in a month time. Uh, we will keep you updated. Once again, thank you very much. Do have yourselves a good morning, afternoon, or evening, depending on uh, your time zone. Goodbye for now. Bye-bye. Goodbye, everyone.